Okay, today I'm going to show you the Good and the Beautiful Math Level 3, and then after I show you a little walkthrough of the book, then I'll tell you my impressions and what we like about it, because I'm just going to start with, I like this book. We definitely are going to keep using this curriculum. It has been a really good fit for our family. So I have used every level of the Good and the Beautiful Math, so I can kind of give a wide variety of opinions and thoughts on it. So it comes with a book. I do not love the layout of this. I do not love that it's the binding of the book. So you will see, let me make sure there's nothing. Okay. You will see that we are tearing pages out as we go. So I will only be able to show you what's left. I have the rest of the pages in a in the box, but I can show you the beginning lesson, I guess, because it's still in here. But I do not love that part. I prefer the spiral binding, but so math K and one come on spiral binding. The older grades don't, and I prefer the spiral binding, but that's a personal preference. Other people don't. You do kind of need to break the spine on it by taking it and bending it, but that is a minor thing. So it also comes with this math box, and inside the math box is a, you have the calendar side, which they go through and write every once in a while how many days are in each month. Then the temperature at which water freezes, water boils, and the average body temperature at both Fahrenheit and Celsius. It's just a great little way when it's brought up in the book and tells you to do that to just practice those little facts. There is a graph on the other side. We have not used that yet this year, but we will, I know, because I've done this one before. Okay, and then it also has a little measuring tape, so my kids think that's really fun. These are little fraction blocks. I don't think we need them again, but I like to keep them because we just used them. And then it has tanagram blocks that they use to build different pictures. Has a 10 sided dice and a regular sided dice. Two little pawns. This, these have quartz and quart pint gallon on them. And this one has cups, pints, quartz gallon. So these are used for a super fun game to practice remembering these. And what you do is you roll these two dice. I'll just show you because I think this is a really great game. You roll the two dice and you decide, oh, you each roll one. Yeah, like mom rolls one, child rolls one. And then you decide whose is more. So it's four quarts more than a pint. Okay, then you win the point. And whoever gets three points first wins the game. So it's a fun little way to review those things. I also keep in here a brad and a paper clip. Because there are some games where you need to make a spinner, and it tells you to use a pencil. But if you put the brad and the paper clip in there and spin it, it makes a much better spinner than a pencil. And so that's just a little trick I use. So that is the box that comes with it. So let's look at the book. This curriculum is for anybody to be able to teach. If you are not an amazing math person, or an above average math person even, there is an answer key you can get to go with it. I have not needed it for math three. I do get the answer key for math four and up because there's just so much work and I don't do a lot of it with them. So it would just take, I could do all the math work, but it would then take me a while. So, although I kind of wish I'd gotten it for this one, but I didn't. It tells you how to break the binding on the book with a little QR code there if you want to see how it's at. Has a reference sheet, skip counting chart and different shapes. So they can, what the words mean, add in some, menu and subtrend difference, multiplier, multiple can, product, those words that are useful. And some parts of geometry. It tells you, okay, I want to make sure you can see everything. It tells you what you need. And actually, they do have a free PDF of the answer key too. So you can just download a free PDF of the answer key if you don't want to have to purchase a book. I personally prefer to have the actual book. Then it talks about how many lessons. I highly, highly recommend you listen when they say just do a lesson a day or four lessons a week. If you need to stretch it out because, like, we have co-op, so on co-op days we don't do math because we're at co-op all day. So we may not get four lessons done in a week. We may only get three some weeks, and then another week we may catch up and do an extra one and get five done. But overall we average about four a week. I, I see a lot of people online talking about doing like four or five lessons, two or three lessons in a day. And I just, 
pushing your kid that hard, they may be able to do it, but they're going to get to a point with the older math where their brains just are not mature enough or to either sit for the length of time it takes or to understand the harder concepts. You don't need your kid doing algebra in sixth grade. So just, it's okay to take your time. Even if they're super smart, I highly recommend adding in other challenging ways to think rather than just pushing through the math curriculum super fast. That's my personal opinion. I'll probably do a video about that someday because I see that a lot. I think it's great to challenge your kids and their brains in other ways rather than just pushing hard on one thing. And I have a child that's going to major in math in college. I have some mathy kids. My husband's extremely mathy. So I know what mathy kids are like. My kid that's going to major in math in college used to answer his, when he was like four, would answer his first grade sister's flashcards and make her mad. That was always fun. So it has a master, a multiplication mastery chart where they can see the, what they've mastered. We do use, they sell a, a musical multiplication set. We do use these. It's a down, you have a download on your computer and then these have pictures in them. We do use those to practice multiplication. It has a multiplication chart that you can use. And then this one also has three, I say also because I just did the, the first grade review. Has three units, or no, four units. This one has four units. Sorry. I got a frog in my throat. It has four units, and after every unit, there's going to be an assessment. I'm going to show you this assessment is after a unit 90. So this would, and the assessments have two sections, a purple section and an orange section. They do the purple section. If they get that correct, they don't need to do the orange section. And notice it's over two days, so you can just do purple one day, grade it, and then do orange, or you can do parts of them each day. Then here, again, it's just there's purple and orange sections for every concept that they're learning. And this one is a little on the longer side, so you may want to break it up over two days. It gives you two days of lessons to do it. Sorry, I have a kid in the background that just woke up, so a few morning sneezes. And so those are the assessments. The assessments are not meant to be like, oh, my kid is failing. They're so horrible. This isn't working. They're to see where maybe you need to practice a little more. There's nothing wrong with that. Kids are going to struggle with a certain concept every once in a while. And you need to stop and kind of maybe do a little bit more on that concept. This is a spiral curriculum. It is going to take concepts and it's going to teach them. It's going to introduce them and teach them. And then it's going to... Bring them back in review a few days later and a few days after that and a few days after that. Then we'll do a lesson where we expand on what we've learned. It is not a mastery program. So a mastery program is going to take a concept and it's going to kill and drill it. You're going to do it and do it and do it and do it till you have it down. And some kids really thrive with that mindset. And then they remember it forever. A lot of kids need to have that consistent review of the concept to not forget it. So let's look at a lesson. Well, let's see. Let me check and make sure I can show you the first lesson here. Because there's nothing personal. Sometimes they have them practicing like phone numbers or things. So I want to make sure that. Okay. So I guess this is lesson two. Where's lesson one? Oh, there's lesson one. So I want to show you the first lesson. Again, I'm just checking real quick to make sure I can. Okay. So lesson one. Skip counting by five. Skip counting by hundreds. These are things they learned in second grade. So it should be review. If not, you just practice and learn it. Then we start talking about place value, and they start working through some place value. This one has some kinesthetics. So you roll a dice, and then depending on what your dice is, you do that kind of thing as you go from each different peak. So it's trying to add a little bit of fun, a little bit of something different, so it's not just read this number, read this number, read this number. Okay, and then we have lesson practice. And then, so this still goes with what they've learned in the lesson. The review and activities are separate. So the review and activities, my third grader does those on her own before I've ever done the lesson. So this is something that she can do, and she does her language arts the same way. While I'm working with one of my younger kids, she can do this part. And then when I come back and do her lesson with her, I can grade this part, and then we do the lesson together. So that's kind of how we work that. If you 
or you could teach the lesson and then they can do the review. But the review can be done before the lesson. So there's a look at kind of the first lesson. Now let's turn, well, we'll just turn to where we're going to do today. And so this one is one of those I showed you in the box, that little dry erase board. This one is one that you would use that with. And then how many days are in September? What month comes after December? They're just slowly building their knowledge of this. And it just keeps going even into like fourth and fifth grade. The review books that they have for those grades still have the same kind of thing. Those have a really fun little review book as they get to those grades. I'll show you that one day. Okay, and then again, it says read to your child, even if you've never taught anything before. It lays it out for you. Just read this to your child. Read this with them. Just keep going with them. And then here, so this is kind of fun because it shows them a map and they're starting to learn some other things and be exposed to some different things like provinces in Canada. Not something I normally would spend time talking to my kid about, but it's kind of nice because knowing those is somewhat useful. And then again, the review and activities page, which she's done part of. We did not do that part. She must need help. I think the, <laughs> she must get confused on that part. So these are really good for them to practice learning to draw and spatial reasoning and things, I guess. So. And then multiplication fact practice. So then we'll flip to lesson 64. Oh, again, has that temperature chart. I promise it's not in every lesson. <laughs> then practicing skip counting. We're still practicing our skip counting, but for multiplication, it is so, so useful to know how to skip count. We're working on it. A lot of days, I'll just write out the skip count for them right on the top of the page. And we'll go through it a few times. We're slowly learning. They do not have to have everything mastered. Your child is not failing if they can't skip count. We're learning. We're growing. We're doing. And then we're reading, and we just follow through. A multiples match. Then over here, we have practice. These little Venn diagrams are so useful for them to start learning how to compare things. Learning multiples of three and four. It seems like, well, why do they need to know this? Because later they're going to do fractions and they're going to have to find something. that They're going to have to find common denominators. And this is how you do it. So starting to just slowly introduce a concept. The kid has no idea why they're doing this. But they slowly introduce this. And then when they get bigger and they're trying to go, oh, well, it goes with three and four. Oh, well, that's 12. They just will start to know them. Because they've started to build those little pegs now. Okay. Then what is not a multiple? Starting to cross those out, starting to think through the multiples. This is why skip counting is so useful. Can I skip count by? Is it a number when I skip count? And then here's the review and activities. They have sometimes have these fun little riddles that they throw in. Okay, let's skip to another page so we can look at it. Okay, again, this one has the temperature on that chart. Then more skip counting. And again, read to the child. This is where they're going to start learning multiplication, where you're doing multiple digits. So you see how nicely they lay this out. Do this step, do this step, do this step. And so you can you slowly, and they even put these little boxes when they first start, because you're going to end up with carrying something here. I also have some blocks that I like to get out when they do this and like physically manipulate like their unit unit blocks that's what they are i really like to manipulate with those but this shows you step by step how to do it so again it just keeps showing you and it gives you the little boxes so it's a very gentle way to introduce it and it slowly gets more and more okay and then i'll show you one lesson from the back i have children i hear waking up so i'm gonna have to go make breakfast they're all up early we stayed up late and now they're up early okay so mental math learning how to multiply by 11s we're getting into some geometry here, some shape practice, learning words like congruent and similar, just like a little introduction to those words. And then again, some review. At the back of the book, there are, we've popped out a lot of these, there are some little manipulatives that you will pop out. This is where the fraction ones I showed you in the box came from. So there are those little things that they will take out as they go and do. So I'm going to turn you around and tell you my opinion of this real quick. And I will be quick because I need to feed these people some breakfast. Okay, so my opinion of the Good and the Beautiful Math 3. I like this curriculum a lot. This is the second time I've done Math 3 with a kid. My now fifth grader did it two years ago when it first came out. 
I love the prettiness of this curriculum. It helps keep some attention. We've done some curriculums that are really boring looking. They're just very plain. Now, some kids, I think, need that. The only thing I will say is I don't think it has enough basic math back practice. Like multiplication practice. We do the musical multiplication. It has some practice in each week or each day. I have done before, especially addition and subtraction. I don't feel like it had enough practice sheets. So we did buy an extra book that had practice. We use extra math, little app for practice. You could use flashcards. I do recommend you put a little extra practice for basic math facts into it. But I do like this curriculum. I find it builds very well. The kindergarten first Second grade, even the beginning of third grade, very slow and gentle. You can do it in 10 or 15 minutes. It doesn't take a lot of time. As they get older, the last part of math three into four, five, and six, it gets much more intense. And I like that slow buildup. I like my little kids to be little, but we are academic homeschoolers, meaning we like to do a lot of academics. We have kids that are need to be pushed academically. And so I find that these work really well to slowly build. We transition from math six to Saxon pre-algebra with no trouble whatsoever. My son misses only a few things here and there for Saxon pre-algebra. So it was a very smooth transition. Math six, I would say, is on the advanced side, even though kindergarten, I'd say, is maybe on the little low side. So I like the slow transition and the slow buildup. I I think I said this earlier, but I do not recommend that you just do a whole bunch of lessons in one day. Now, if you need to do two because you're like behind, you missed a couple days in a week and you want to do two because you want to get done before spring so you can be outside and play in May. Totally get that. But I don't recommend you try to do six, seven, eight lessons in a week. And, oh, they finish it in half a year. And now I'm moving on to the next one because there's a maturity level that kids really do better if they get to a maturity level. Also, kids can get really frustrated if they're super successful and they're doing great in math one. They're doing three lessons a day and then they're six and they're doing trying to do math two. And OK, well, I'm still maybe doing two lessons a day. And then they're only seven and they're getting into math three and they're suddenly getting to where it's a lot harder and they can't. And they start to feel really discouraged. So I really encourage you if you have a kid that just has a huge attention span, wants to do more and more that you explore some other subjects and add in some more things, add in some variety, pull in some art, some music. There's, you know, lots of online sources and lots of different things you can use for some of those. I had a kid that taught herself piano because at the time we didn't have a piano teacher and we just got the books and we did it. You know, just at least it was an exposure to it. I didn't ever figure she maybe would be amazing at piano, but she's actually pretty decent. But slowly just exposing them to different things. Logic games are really great if they're very mathematical. So I like to just start bringing in some other ideas and some other things for them to learn and explore rather than just push forward on the math or even the language arts, which I've seen some people talking about doing. It never occurred to me to do more than one lesson when I was first started. And now with all the stuff online, you see people comparing. And so I just want to encourage you, do not compare yourself to others. Work through the book. Remember, the goal is learning. The goal is for your child to learn, not just check the box of completing it. So hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. It's a little long-winded going through it, but I wanted you to be able to see different parts of the book so that you can get an idea of what it looks like. I know it's hard when you can't actually physically go see a book in the store. And so I doubt most of you live in Utah and can go to the store and see them. So just wanted you to be able to see what the inside of the book is like so you can get an idea and feel for it. Thanks for joining us today. Please leave a comment if you have something else you'd like me to talk about or you have any questions, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos about what we do.